He is an advocate. We also have a studio mark with Chachi Communication Strategist. And we have public policy analyst, uh, Maliba Anil. I got it right on the first take. Uh, but Jensen, what do you make of the statement I read uh, before the break? I know on Friday I made a lot of fun of my math teacher saying, Hapa ni wapi. But now I wish... They were here. <laughs> this statement, persistent value erosion spilled over into the third quarter. This is attributable in part to the value agnostic capital outflows by foreigners from emerging and frontier markets coupled with the protracted earnings recession by most corporates. The dynamics of demand and supply in a characteristically foreign-dominated foreign market are imbalanced, thereby adversely affecting equity market valuations. And this is with regard to the headline there, 42% of foreign investors flee NSC in nine months. Please, Mark, help us make sense of this statement. Well, um, thankfully, I, I sat on the CMA board, so I, I know what they mean. So the value erosion they're talking about is the fact that um, the share value has been dropping for the last nine months consistently. Right. Uh, secondly, when they talk about uh, value agnostic capital outflows by foreigners, it means they're not the, the, the uh, foreigners are living despite of the value but or perceived value of the shares. Why? Uh, this is because the, the, the dollar markets and the U.S. having increased their interest rates, that is more attractive foreigners than what Kenya is, is giving. Third is the fact that there is the issue of um, many of our corporates have seen reduced uh, profits all the way from Kenya Power uh, to various institutions have issued profit warnings, so that's not attractive. But also as a country, we are over leveraged against the dollar. You can imagine if you put in your money uh, when the dollar was 120 uh, to the shilling, uh, the shilling to the dollar rather, now you're talking about 152, 154, 155. So we are over leveraged against the dollar and therefore that makes us seem one, unstable and two, we will not be able to afford the trading that we do because much of what we trade in is in imports, meaning that we need more dollars. So this situation is a combination of all four factors, none of which make investing in the NSE attractive to any particular person. Okay, what does this mean, if anything, to Mama Mboga? Well, if, oh, Mama Mboga. Uh, <laughs> okay, to no, the average. No, <laughs> Whoever is, is listening, no, no, why it's, should it's, they it's care? It's because the advice I was going to give was, uh -huh. If you have any savings, you've got any money, uh, please denominate it in a different currency. That, I know that's an unf uh, unpopular opinion. I should not be uh, propagating people saving money in dollars and pounds. But if you look at the erosion of, of the shilling, essentially, if you look at inflation, a thousand shillings today is worth 700 shillings last year. Mm -hmm. And I'm being very, very generous with that statement. Meaning, if you had saved your 1,000 shillings in a bank and you were given 7%, the rate of inflation was nearly three times what you saved. So you lost money saving your money. You see? Mm -hmm. So essentially, this uh, calls for people to um, put their money in different ways so that they don't lose more money. Okay. I don't want to land in trouble. Thank yes. you, but thank you for being <laughs> candid with us. Uh, Arnold Maliba, uh, Wakili, I'm coming to you. Don't worry. Arnold? Fact, first of all, I'll just start with uh, what we were speaking before we went live. Uh -huh. uh, probably we just need to go back. and. Uh, no, I'm, we're coming back to it. The I'm, layoffs rise to COVID no, levels. No, I'm, uh, I'm talking about the same oh, story, what okay. we were talking about. Uh -huh, uh -huh. First of all, let's start from a point where mm -hmm. we have to actually have Mark, who has sat on, uh, uh, on the board to try to break this down. Uh -huh. I think uh, that uh, the BD is one of the best selling business papers, but I still, even as a person who is interested in public affairs, struggle a lot mm. uh, to read and understand what actually they try to say. Mm. Uh, I think going forward, uh, the editorial policies need to actually be altered to ensure that the audiences they target. I know because I deal with people in high places, middle places, and even low places, that this paper is not, sometimes it's bought for prestige, mm. so that people just see you bought the business daily. You seem intelligent. You look, <laughs> so yeah. you seem intelligent and work. <laughs> Otherwise, they don't need to make reporting so complex and so difficult. Thank you. Otherwise, mm. uh, who, who is their audience? I'm talking about mm -hmm. a, a middle-level Kenyan. Mm. I wouldn't mm. be an average Kenyan like Mark was trying to actually say, but... Uh, uh, even the average people walking around with these papers yeah. don't so much make sense of these papers. So it's important to break down this. 
because the, who is their audience? Mm. And, and a lot of times, like Mark said, I think, they, are the, they write these things for themselves, not for the people out there. So can we really, first of all, make business reporting and financial reporting simple and straight? Because w with this jargon-based uh, way of reporting, and you know, even politics used to be that way. I say really? that, yes. Uh, if you look at newspapers of 2002, 2003, 2004, mm. uh, it, it was quite jargon-based and uh, uh, mixed up with uh, political science, uh, languaging and everything else around mm. that. And then it looked like it was so difficult. Yes. Over time, of course, we've weathered it down and made politics easy to understand. And that is why Kenyans are now actually politically woke. We, as a country that is firmly the region to be uh, business-minded, yes. we honestly need to actually go beyond this. Uh -huh. uh, this is a little bit uh, quite technical, technical uh, for the people that we are selling to. Mm. Let us not make it so difficult for Kenyans to understand these concepts. Business is not rocket science. Mm. This way of reporting is so difficult. Having done a little bit of ranting, I just need to actually say this, uh -huh. that uh, if you look at uh, the economic charts since 1992, at least when, when Kenya started having econ, uh, competitive elections, uh, our, the balls as an indicator, of course, and the economy, all the indicators around the economy normally go down as we head to elections, hit rock bottom the year of the election and start to struggle going up. Mm -hmm. uh, that has been the trend. So you'll always see the optimum being the middle of a term. So if you're drawing a graph, mm -hmm. you're going to see we go down and then, of course, get to the optimum in the middle, and then as we head towards campaign again, it drops. I know campaigns are a necessary, a necessary evil, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, then we, we really need to weather it down. Because uh, again, something else that Mark has not mentioned is that we're talking about 42% of foreigners mm -hmm. have left. Mm. Yet 52% value of the bus has gone down. Mm. Uh, what if the other 58 chose to leave? To leave? I'm talking about foreigners. We're talking about 42% of foreigners. So which means there's still another 58% of foreigners. So then that uh, begs the question, mm. what is the value of the locals in our markets? Uh, probably less than 20. Because if 42% have gone and we've, we've lost up to 52%, but we still have got 58% of them around. Are they holding the other, the rest? So these are questions. That's why I'm actually saying that if we were to make reporting much easier, mm. then we will see where we stand. Otherwise, people are going to move around with this newspaper. But if you look at this story, it's actually quite a dangerous uh, information in here that should get all of us worried, including members in parliament that are... Uh, we are clapping for using their CDF very well. Mm. People who ordinarily should be worried about the information herein. But will they break this down easily? Would this, for example, be uh, a reason why somebody actually brings a motion in parliament to discuss the state of the economy, for example? Mm -hmm. uh, if it's reported this way, definitely no. But this is serious information that honestly should, uh, parliament should call an urgent sitting to actually discuss this. Mm. But we are not going to discuss that. We would rather discuss how somebody has actually used their CDF and uh, branded it much better than discuss serious issues okay. here. All so. Right. So, uh, Wakili is, is uh, eager, I'm sure, to jump in at this uh, point. But now, uh, sorry, sorry, just one second, but Arnold, how do you expect locals to invest if you're intimidating us with words like value agnostic? That is why... Man, I need a dictionary. That is why, Olive, uh, if the reporting policy changed a little bit, more Kenyans will actually see that investing in markets is actually a venture they can actually get in. It's yeah. not complex, it's not rocket science, it's okay. something they can do. And, and, and okay, actually, in your we, defense. Weirdly uh -huh. enough, weirdly enough. Uh. So let's look at a share like KCB. KCB is, is, is a, a, a company that has good standing, it's been trading well, but it's lost more than two thirds of its value, meaning that if its value is true as per how we know, that this is the best time for Kenyans to buy their own shares. Mm -hmm. Because it, the shares that we have in this country are undervalued, not because the products or the companies don't have value, but because uh, of this statement, value, uh, value agnostic <laughs> foreigners. Basically meaning that we have devalued what our companies are worth. So if you have Safaricom shares and you are looking at a sunset or maybe four or five years to your shares, this is the time to buy. Mm. 
All right. Good, good. Thank you for your financial advice this morning. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, and in your defense, you had talked about, I think, during the break, so you assumed you had made the submission, the 48%, 52 Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, Wakili, we also enjoy listening to you guys because <laughs> your language can also be very interesting. Uh, but your thoughts on this report? Thank you very much. Um, like uh, Maliba, Arnold, and Mark Pichachi, I think this kind of reporting does not necessarily address the common person. And I think it's very easy to understand why. Most of the investors in Nairobi Stock Exchange, people who have a lot of interest in the money market, are not the farmers. They are uh, on the ground. And I think that is why the language as done here would rarely reach the ordinary person. But having said that, it's important also to do a postmortem of why we have persistent value erosion for the last nine months. And I think this is something that should really concern the office of the president, which has several economic advisors. This should really concern the Ministry of Finance and Planning, because it's uh, several months. We've actually done more than one year since we had elections. If we've done more than one year since we had elections and uh, the stock exchange continues to suffer erosion and the money market continues to shrink and even worse, we have foreigners, foreign investment uh, taking off from the money market. It means that there's something that should really worry us. And um, I, I think for the viewers and all of us in this country, we, we now need to ask ourselves the hard questions. If this is what is happening in the money market, if, uh, the, the shilling conti if the shilling continues to suffer, and I think it's public knowledge that the shilling continues to suffer erosion, and the dollar continues to strengthen, what is it that we need to do at the policy level so that we protect investors across the board, so that we ensure that uh, Kenyans, as uh, Mr. Bichachi was saying, do not lose wealth that have already put in various places. I, I think that is what we uh, get away from this. I think that is what we should be able to distill from this information, much as I've said, it doesn't address the common person. But I know the common person, the tea farmers have put funds in circles, and a lot of circles are investing in the money market. And if all of us are invested in the money market, though not directly, and very little information, we need to protect this investment. We need to protect this wealth, so that I don't put in 1,000 shillings in the year 2020. 22, and in the year 2023, it has come down to 700 shillings and there is nothing that I can do about it. Because uh, when you look at the real estate today, the real estate uh, as a nation has become dubious. Today you have a title deed. Uh, tomorrow you have uh, no title deed. Uh, you have a lease today. Tomorrow the government is taking over saying you are given this illegally. So if the real estate is very shaky, if farming as it is has become fractious, if farming has become very slippery, and now the money market is more fluid than the real estate, it's more fluid than farming, uh, the weather has done its own things, it means as a country at the policy level, we need to relook uh, the faggeries, we need to relook the dangers that we are facing as an economy and have a way of mitigating this so that we protect investors and we also protect our wealth as a country. Thank you. Very solid point because for many of us, we view assets as tangible, yes. you know. Uh, and so easing our understanding of how these markets work uh, will grow investment. All right. Uh, let's take a look quickly because I have looked at the clock and we need to get into the topic. So the standard headline is also related to our topic. So I will put a pin in it, right? So this is how not to bring... How not to bring down the, uh, the cost of living. Uh, economy, e economy experts fault the president's approach to taxation and cost of living, saying the policies will only sink the country deeper in mire and push many to avoid paying taxes, which will ultimately make life unbearable. So here we'll put a pin in it. Um, I also see here um, a report on IBC reforms versus right of representation. At least seven regions are scheduled to hold by elections. However, without a fully constitution, constituted electoral commission, commission, Kenyans in these places uh, go without a fundamental right. Very good report there. I'll find a day for us to interrogate that uh, more, gentlemen. Um, uh, let's see. Northeastern leaders call for help amid flooding. The star, so we'll come back to that headline story on the standard. The star big names miss out as MP Nyoro tops new ranking. Uh, MPs have previously accused pollsters of skewed poll. When you flip to page, is it four or five? of the star, they have some faces of those who are missing. Wait, let me see the editorial cut too. 
Oh, okay. This has to do with the reorganization the other day. So here they are. We have uh, Kimani Shungwa. Uh, we have um, uh, Jeanette Mohammed, uh, Sylvanas Osoro there. Uh, we also have... Uh, here he uh, just give me a second just give me a second Owen Baya but the image is cut let me see if I flip down whether the other half of him will show up yes here we go Owen Baya and uh, we have as well Mishi Mboko Likoni so uh, some of those who performed well are the finance committee chairman Kimani Kuria who moved from position 14 to position 14 from 288 in 2020 uh, but these are some of those uh, who are missing from that top performers list uh, quickly the people daily uh, arrest exposes rot in police stations anti-graft agencies soup opens lid on routine arbitrary seizure and extortion of kenyans over petty offenses by chain of officers seeking promotions on basis of bribes collected for their bosses so interesting that page four of the people daily uh they have a much larger email, image here of helen obiri savoring her glory in new york and uh unfortunately 17 killed by heavy rains 15 injured and uh, leakage questions linger oh, as 900,000 said kcse exam oh my goodness we're remiss in not wishing them the very best all the success in their national exams. We had KCP last week. This week we've crossed. We are now more focused on KCSE, although they had already started the practicals and such uh, and language tests. Uh, so all the best uh, to the candidates. Uh, I assume I'm also speaking for, but I am speaking uh, for my panelists yes. this morning. Yes, 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 indeed. All right. Okay, so let us now transition into the topic of conversation. And we're discussing, sorry, I was unable to pull up my WhatsApp this morning. I don't know what's going on. But uh, we are looking at um, uh, give unto Caesar. So, uh, number one, shakedowns. <laughs> you get what I mean by that taxation. Uh, number two, we're looking at jet setters, foreign trips. And number three, we are looking at uh, inflated budgets, given the remarks made by the controller of budget. <laughs> What do you make of this? How not to bring down the cost of living? Do you, do you think this is an apt uh, descriptor of where we are now as a country, Wakili? Um, I think that is a 100% assessment of what we as a country are going through. We have a situation where we've increased the budget from uh, 3 trillion in 2021-2022 and to 3.6 trillion in 2022. 2024 financial year um, we're trying to extract as much money as possible from the people we're trying to press the taxpayers to pay every other cent we are now violating principles of taxation because uh, some of the good principles of taxation in this country is that you should be able to extract enough money as a, as a tax collector without annihilating without finishing completely the person who is paying tax but what we have as a country today is that we want to extract everything from the taxpayer. You have a budget of 3.6 trillion shillings, which rarely may not transform the economy in the long run. Uh, economists would say that the best way to deal really with the situation that we have as a country is to ensure that uh, we collect as much taxes as possible. But at the same time, you need to grow the economy. When you analyze the budget, and uh, my colleagues here would be able to analyze the budget, is that Yes, the budget has increased, but where are the sectors? Where are the areas that are targeted by this budget? A lot of the money that we've put into this budget goes into recurrent expenditure. And uh, something that is hidden, and I think this is what the government needs to speak to and uh, tell Kenyans the truth is, for example, when you look at the executive, the executive, and uh, this, is, uh, this is very relevant in the topic today, has been gallivanting the globe. Over, all of us know that the country is in economic doldrums. That is to say, we are slipping down. It is a very slippery situation as a country. But we have uh, the executive traveling all over the place. Parliament is not spared as well. Parliamentarians cannot rest. They are traveling. They are all over the country. I mean, they are all over the world uh, spending taxpayers' money. What is the value of these trips? The value is yet to be discerned. You have even the judiciary. About two weeks ago, the judiciary had an induction to, uh, through the JSC somewhere in Dubai. You go to Dubai to induct 
new members of the commission and continuing members of the commission. When this is something that you can do within a radius of five kilometers in Nairobi, you can even request to go to one of the primary schools and you do an induction without subjecting the taxpayers uh, to the ignominy of having to pay huge bills, of course, for no value. My problem is this. We have a very good budget, a very big budget, which could spur the economy if used prudently. And this brings me to the other aspect of taxation. We should be able to use what we collect very prudently. But do we do that? We do not do that as a country. I do not want to repeat that the ex executive is on, is, on a, is on an extravagant spending or non-essential expenditure. Same thing to parliament, same thing to the judiciary. Um, I, I need to conclude this by saying this. We have not put money into production. We have not put money into subsidiz subsidizing production. And I would speak to the common pa person by looking at the tea farmer. The tea farmer today continues to spend the same amount of money in plucking of tea. The tea farmer spends the same amount of money in weeding. The tea farmer continues to spend the same amount of money in pruning. The only subsidy is on the fertilizer subsidy, which is less than 10% uh, in terms of uh, production costs. If we've not done all that, if we have not done any value addition, because I would have expected this government that said it was for the hustler to relook the issue of value addition for the farmers. And um, uh, Mr. Bichachi and uh, Mr. Maliba Arnold and the viewers, tea in this country is the leading foreign exchange earner. We are, not even, we are not talking about factories, we are not talking about industries. We do not have any industrial production that would earn us sufficient foreign exchange. The leading one is tea, which means our economy is largely agrarian. Our economy is largely agricultural. But there is no much money that has been taken there, number one, to reduce production, number two, to enhance value addition. Absent such initiatives as we are as a country, I want to agree with the topic that uh, what this government is doing is taking us into a sure, a sure path. And which path is that? Into economic doldrums. We do not have a future as a country in terms of uh, ensuring that we have an economy that is uh, ebullient, an economy that is resurgent. All right. Um, Mark, given we are told, speaking of economic trajectories, we are told, so the plan is to kulipa ushuru nikuji, tegemea, so we will fund our own budget, uh, we will borrow less, and in that way, we will get things back on the right track. But when you see headlines uh, such as this on the front page of the Business Daily, uh, layoffs, we had already discussed one of them, which is foreign investors fleeing, uh, layoffs rise to COVID levels. Layoffs rise to COVID levels on higher taxes, fuel costs, if I'm to even just speak of the Mkulima, yes, you have subsidized fertilizer, but on account of diesel, the cost of diesel going up, the use of machinery costs more. Uh, Mark Bichachi. You know, uh, I've said on this show before, when uh, people have argued and said that uh, the pain we are going through is temporary and the pain we will recover at some point, as though... Uh, the, the process that we were going through was supposed to somehow magically cure our problems. Now, let's first understand what the problem is. Mm -hmm. Problem number one is that the world has been going through an inflationary reality. Mm -hmm. The cost of goods from here to Kuwait to the United States has been going up. Yes. So already, uh, the whole world was dealing with higher commodity prices. Now, what that means is that as a country, you need to react and ask yourself, what policies do you need to put in place so that businesses can continue to happen and people can remain in jobs and still afford to buy what is available to buy? Because that's how economies run. Mm -hmm. Instead, what we did is we said inflation has brought us here mm -hmm. in terms of cost of commodities. So we will add taxes. So now we've got inflation on top of taxation. So, for example, let's take fuel as an example. Uh, uh, fuel has gone up in this country, not just because the international price is high, but because we have taxed it more. Okay? Meaning 
we have effectively reduced the money supply in the market. You don't have to take my word for it. The taxman said there has been a 12% decrease in fuel use in the last few months. I can attest because even when uh, Olive calls me to come to this show, I have to check my gauge for my car to see whether I can afford to drive from where I stay to this show. So definitely, my expenditure on fuel has, 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 has decreased significantly. Now, what is the net effect of that? When you decrease what people are spending, it means that that petrol station has less attendance, joblessness. Okay? Mm -hmm. It means also that the places I used to frequent that were from the other side of town no longer enjoy my business because I don't go there. Right? Then, as though it was not enough to tax expenditure, we also taxed income. So, the average Kenyan needed to have more money to buy more expensive things but instead of giving them more money, we gave them less money via many taxes, meaning we've got less money chasing after more essential goods. What is the net result of that? The net result of that is the stated uh, desire for us to be tax uh, 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 and, and income stable has not been met. And indeed, I dare state, cannot be made, simply because the business environment has shrunk. Now, it is time for us as a country to get our heads out of the sand. We used to say, kita turamba, kisha turamba. <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's already at the point where if we do not do an about face, we will be in proper pain two years from now. It is time to say that, number one, we need to ease off on taxation. Okay? You cannot get more milk from a cow just because you squeezed it harder. It's not going to work. And grass does not grow by pulling. We need to restructure the way we have thought about our economy. I may not be a professor of economics like Ndi, but I have been paying bills long enough to know that this situation is not tenable. So this country needs to relook. And what is it's, it's very simple. Number one, we need to stabilize how much we are losing value to the dollar. That has to happen post haste. Mm -hmm. Simply because people who import and do businesses in importation are finding it impossible. Although we were you, told that our dollar, our, the exchange rate was overvalued. Now, you see, those are things, again, that we should stop saying. Because then you create panic in the market, and then you create people who, if you say today the dollar is overvalued, I'll tell you what anyone who's gone to finance school will do. Go and buy dollars. Because if I buy a dollar today, it's at 156. Tomorrow is at 160. I've gained 10 shillings. Which other business will I do that will give me 10 shillings per dollar per week? There is none. So when you say such things, you're not solving the problem of the dollar. You're actually increasing the desire for people to hold them because it is attractive. So you're not solving the problem. So the problem needs to be sorted at the root. What is the issue? That we need to make sure that the dollar is stable. We cannot work in a business environment where you're ordering something, uh, 10 tons of uh, clinker, if you're in the cement industry, uh, you ordered it at 150. By the time it arrives at port, your, the dollar is at 160. So how are you going to transfer that cost to, to, your, to, your, to your consumers? So the dollar needs to be stabilized. And the other reason you need to stabilize the dollar is every time we lose a shilling in terms of value, our national debt goes up by around four billion dollars. Billion? <laughs> yes. Dollars? Yes. It's around, it's, it's, it's a lot of money every time we, no, not dollars, 400 million dollars, sorry, I misspoke. Oh, okay. <laughs> so 400 million dollars for every time we lose a shilling in value. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because we pay back in dollars. So if you combine all this, the mo most urgent thing we need to fix is the dollar. The dollar rate needs to be fixed. Second thing, let us relook at our taxes. You need to balance between taxation and attraction of business. So 
you cannot tax so much that business dwindles, then the whole point of your taxation is lost. So the many taxes that we've come up with, let them sit down, find out which taxes they need to ease so that business is done. For example, the idea that you want to tax people more at, at, at entry at airports is may seem smart. Why? Because it is true. There are many Kenyans who fly to Turkey and come back with suitcases full of suits and it's a lady but she's carrying suits that are the size of Arnold. Of course she's coming to sell. But taxing her is not going to help the country. Why? Because when she brings those suits, there's a girl seated there at the stall here, over here, across the road in Kimathi Street, where she's selling that suit. She will sell it at 30000 Someone will get a job. And guess what? After that 30000 she'll pay rent, she'll pay school fees, she'll buy a soda, you'll get your taxes another way. It is not good to tax someone before the business is done. It is always better to tax post business because then you've got an employee you can tax, you've got a business owner you can tax, and you're giving that person the ability to move forward. So yes, is there money to be made from people who buy 10 colognes so that we can come and give to our friends and sell people? Yes, there's money to be made. But is that the place to make money? No. So you must understand that taxation, when it is at, det at the detriment of business, is not viable. And this is, again, not an Azimio position. This is a Kenyan position. Please, Mr. President, if you can hear me, relook at these taxes, fix the dollar. We are crying in pain. All right. Um, Arnold uh, Malibu, although uh, he, he probably might tell you on Klinka, ataki we import, anataka ununue hapa, na utafute tela wake. Arnold Malibu. What do you, sorry, uh, your assessment of this headline on the standard, how not to bring down the cost of living. Economic experts fault the president's approach to taxation and cost of living, saying the policies will only sink the country deeper in mire and push many to avoid paying taxes, which will ultimately make life unbearable. First of all, typical of all Mondays, you realize that... Uh, we, the newspapers, it's a thin news day. Monday is always a thin news day. So uh, you're going to find the smallest of newspapers unless they have got insertions in them. And then, of course, the news, ni, what we will say in Kiswahili is a kutafutilia. I'd like to start from this point. There is no cogent data to actually support as harsh a headline as how not to bring down the cost of living. Uh, if you look at the story, while everybody was speaking, I took time to actually uh -huh. just read and uh, see what is in there. Mm. And whereas Article 33 guarantees all of us the freedom uh, of speech and expression, uh, also sometimes, uh, as much as we are, we are entitled to our opinions, mm -hmm. we also are not entitled to our own facts. Mm -hmm. The story uh, hips the entire uh, problem of where we are to government and uh, the few things that government has done including, uh, of course, uh, misaddressing how the taxation has actually been done. Mm -hmm. So, number one, you realize that the budget, and Wakili spoke about uh, the budget going up from $3 trillion. Not necessarily. Uh, the projection as has worked in MTF has been that uh, the variance, I think, is about 8%. And uh, the last financial year, we were at about 36 We've gone up by about uh, $130 billion, so it's about uh, 3.7 trillion shillings. So entirely, this government is not new. The way this government is doing things is not entirely, because being a bureaucracy is not new. So there is no data to support that government's actions entirely are to blame from where we are. But I'm going to actually demonstrate this by saying this. Number one, as an economy, we've not entirely recovered from COVID. Whether you like that argument or not, that is the fact. No one across the world has entirely recovered from COVID, mm -hmm. and it hit us so hard. Number two, of course, this is the place of elections. Our elections are so anti-economy that the economy literally closes down every time we go to elections. Uh, number three, of course, then there is uh, what has become a habit, post-election statements. Mm -hmm. We still are in one. Over a year since we went to elections, we still have got NADCO as a, an outcome of a statement of the election. We still have got people moving around. We still have got people who, for the longest time, paralyzed the economy of this particular country in the name of what they didn't like, of what came from the, the other elections. Uh, what miracle, what magician will be the government that actually turns that around? We don't want to look at that. Then there are the global challenges. 
the Ukraine-Russian war has had impact across the world. The Black Sea, for example, initiative around how we get wheat and stuff, when the people in the West uh, get everything and run away with it, when we see how, for example, winter is now in the North, everybody else is holding fuel and everything around that. Those are small things, but for an economy as small as ours, they hit us. There are the aspects, like for example, our people, our neighbors, who have actually become very competitive, and it's their right to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, I have seen Uganda coming up with, yes. uh, uh, with a law that uh, really wants to stifle free trade which, in my opinion, Uganda is just now joining Kenyans, where a few cartels can always capture state machinery and run away because the Vitol Bahrain, with a few uh, state-connected cartels in Uganda, now want to ensure that they control that particular market. And I think uh, that particular bill and whatever they're trying to do should be defeated in the court of law because it goes against free trade, goes against the ESE uh, free trade uh, protocols that we have, Everything, it's anti-trade because a few individuals, and it's so different from the government-to-government -government deal that we are doing in Kenya today. What they are coming up with is an attempt at a monopoly, completely a small cartel trying to actually capture up the bucket. And the truth that is that in the long run, they will not get that. So such things are happening. Those are issues that we cannot control entirely. Then there is, of course, the 10 years mismanagement of the economy. We were here cheering when we went on a borrowing spree. The... All those things that we said were good, done, the projects launched, and we didn't know where money came from. We ran our credit card so badly, as in we fleezed everything, and then now we have got a regime here. You can actually say they were part and parcel of it or whatever. But the effects of the last 10 years' mismanagement, the 10 years where we can actually talk about five, where the opposition, all of a sudden, of course, for reasons best known to themselves, decided that they would actually join government. That particular way of doing things, we are now seeing impact today. But this particular way of looking at things is not very friendly because we love low-lying foods when we have to score a headline. So how do you do? You get around a few people to actually put up this particular opinion, and they keep running. I can see Mark is actually eating to speak, but uh, <laughs> while he spoke, I didn't eat. I was also preparing. So I, I, <laughs> so, okay, so I do need to take so, a break, though. <laughs> so I, 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 need, I, I need, to, uh -huh. I need to, to finalize my submission. Uh -huh. So if you look at the background against which this is happening, then you actually come to the conclusion that uh, if it were not for some of the measures we've put in place as a country today, it's likely that we will be in a bad place. It's very likely that we will by now have actually gone in the red and we will have defaulted on our debt. It's likely that things will be so bad because um, Mark will actually tell you that uh, the flight from the boss didn't start with this particular administration. A lot of it started happening as we headed to the elections. And then after elections, we had the stalemate. There has been, of course, around this. So if you talk about uh, squeezing taxes out of everyone else, there is literally no data to actually correlate the two. It's easy to get academic about this, but no one has actually presented cogent data to actually defend that particular position. Mark spoke eloquently so on global recession. Then the dollar has actually, even in the US, if we are fair, and that's why I was saying that the business daily as the paper of the clever people should be much simpler, should be a language of clever people, okay. not a language of technical people. You know, right. a lot of technical language is not necessarily clever. Okay. So it, it should be easier for us to actually get it. There's been inflation around the dollar, even in the U.S., across the world. How then does the shilling stay around that? So for the sins that we did over time and all these particular reasons, if you were to juxtapose that against the actions taken by government, then you realize that a number of it have actually forestalled uh, worse situations. Number two, some of them will actually bear fruit in the long run. But lastly, I would like to say this. If, for example, and this is, governance is almost the same as policy. If you are to judge the police officers or a security agencies of a nation by everything they miss and not the things that they stop from happening, 
Like for example, every time. Okay, so Arnold, uh, on I, account I, of keeping us in business, I must. I, I, I'm uh, actually, take I'm actually, a commercial. I was break. drawing. I was drawing a, a, a relative in, but then if we have to pay bills, I'll allow you to go to. Thank you and very then much. Then allow me to actually come and finish this. Do you, mm, we'll see. But because, see. Uh, because, no, because, 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 okay, I'll, <laughs> not now. Okay, let's take a break. <laughs> when we come back, I'll put it to Arnold that well and good. There are global factors that are impacting the state yeah, of the economy. Course. Yes, but uh, when you hear the control of budget say her salary appears as tripled in the budget. I will when you hear uh, some of what, what, what part of what is written here in this report, the, the everyday Kenyan is fed up. Uh, watching YouTube and TikTok clips of large motorcades and frequent flyer pictures of leaders escaping a country where many struggle to get home. On the other side of the spread. Africa's Agenda 2063 envisions bold aspirations for the continent underpinned by inclusive growth and development, seamless integrated trade and commerce, and competitiveness which elevates the continent's standing on the global stage. With a large youthful population, 12% of the world's oil reserves, 42% of the world's gold reserves, and 60% of the world's arable land, Africa holds vast potential to drive global growth and development in an environment increasingly defined by emerging risks. To strengthen the continent's resilience and chart the way forward in the delivery of the ambitious promise of Agenda 2063, Africans need to engage in candid conversations on the opportunities, challenges and risks that lie ahead. This is why the fifth edition of the Kusi Ideas Festival places the spotlight on the continent's Agenda 2063, shedding light on how to unlock the continent's vast opportunity through trade, enterprise, culture and transformation. Between the 6th and 9th of December, delegates from across the globe converge in Gaborone, Botswana for an in-depth agenda-setting discussion on Agenda 2063, making the dream come true during the 5th edition of the annual Kusi Ideas Festival. Register today on www.kusiideasfestival.com to book your slot. On my dark marks, I've tried everything from A to Z, even vitamin C, but hardly any results. Nivea Lumina 630 works from day one, with visible results in just two weeks, and 71% dark marks reduction in 12. Join the 1 million women already using the number one Lumina 630 from Nivea. Enter a world where knowledge is put into practice, and the heart of African agriculture beats loudly and energetically. Welcome to Kikau, a revolutionary talk show that is changing how people think and look at agriculture in Africa. This is the particular variety that is suitable. We will seek to demystify GMOs. Kikau is a platform where African agriculture takes center stage. Seeds, just which is which. From seasoned farmers to thought leaders, they direct us toward a future in which livelihoods thrive and nations prosper. It became possible to move genes from unrelated organisms. Kikau, every Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. on the ON NTV. Discover a future of inclusivity at the inaugural Pensions and Conference 2023, KICC Nairobi, November 28th to 29th, 2023. Theme is Enhancing Social Protection and Inclusive Growth. Engage in exclusive exhibitions, personalized sessions, and extensive brand exposure, fostering meaningful connections. To secure your place, contact William at 0728 550 31 
online. Be part of transforming our future into one that embraces social security and inclusivity. Shaping a society where everyone thrives. Protect future yako. Wait, just let me explain. Being harassed like this is the last thing I expected from you. What's wrong with you? And I'm sure that he asked you to call me. No, no. Thing is, he, he can't even talk. Well, then how is it that you know about me? Because he just wouldn't stop saying your name. And after he got drunk, I took his mobile phone and I found your telephone number. Isn't that convenient? Well, you know what? I'm not going to come and get him and you can tell him that. Head over heels. Win a three-bedroom house in Nanyuki, sitting on a quarter acre or a 30k weekly shopping voucher or a monthly plot for every 100k you spend. Buying or paying for your plot, you earn one entry to the draw. The more you invest, the more entries you get. Bamba Nyumba na AMG. No, wait, wait, wait. Me na itwa Shiro. Shiro, wo wo kapa sasa kwa. <laughs> Kenya Deposit Insurance Corporation lina jukumu la kulinda pesa zako kwenye benki. All right, uh, welcome back to AM Live. Arnold Maliba, less than a minute. Conclude. I actually was drawing a parallel mm -hmm. that uh, when you're looking at the economy and governance, they've got a lot of uh, correlation. And I actually was giving this example. That if, for example, we blame the police for every incident they miss out, and that is how we measure the effectiveness of our police, for, we will be missing out a lot of incidents that they actually stop. If, for example, we had a terror attack, and that is how then we are able to sit and wait the security apparatus and tell them that they are failures because one incident actually went through. Then we are actually not being fair because there are a lot of those that they stop that could actually have been more dangerous. So okay. once in a while in governance, a few of these things slip out because we do not live in a perfect economy, as in a, in a perfect situation. Uh. The same thing when you actually are going to pick out, if I look at this story, it's about the wrong they have done and no proposal tangent, I, I'm talking about something heavy on what could actually have been done right against a backdrop. So you see, A lot of people are saying cut honest, taxation, cut the taxes. No, uh, you again, have, I have hosted XN Iraqi economist. That, he has been here and he has said repeatedly the way to spur the economy is not to increase taxes saying, but cut back on saying, taxes. Okay. Ca can we draw the entire background against which these decisions are being made? All right, Once okay. you have that, you will actually have a very logical understanding of why some of these actions are necessary and how they actually are going to bear fruit. Okay. I'll put a pin in that. Uh, bef Mark, you wanted, I'm coming to you, Akili. Nakuja kwako. Sure. Mark, you had a rejoinder to something he said. You know, if you wake up in the morning and your watchman tells you, boss, we've been robbed. But good news, good news. Uh, it's not my fault because the watchman who was there during the day didn't do a very good job of watching. So when I came, I was unable to do my watchman duties, and I may have let in a few of the thieves, but imagine if you had hired the other watchman, yeah, because the other watchman would have been worse, you would have been robbed more. That is the conversation that needs to stop in this country. At the end of the day, when you got into government, you took on the responsibility past and present, number one, and you are aware. Number two, number two, nothing significant has changed between 2021, 2022, and 2023, internationally speaking. Okay? Three, there is a comparison between Kenya, Ethiopia, Uganda, Tanzania, let's talk about our regional neighbors. What is the inflation there? What is their stand, their, their currency against the dollar? How is it faring? If it is about international 
issues, the war in Ukraine, uh, the, the, uh, recently we were told about Palestinians, Hamas as well affecting us. Why aren't they affecting Ethiopia? Why aren't Tanzanians having the same crisis as we are? Number two, if they inherited a bad government, what did Mwai Kibaki inherit? And why didn't Mwai Kibaki cry every day telling Kenyans he can't do it better because Moi did it badly. Listen, we need to stop the conversation around the issue, explaining the issue, instead of dealing with the issues that are there. And issue number one is Kenya is currently overtaxed. That taxation was not in response to how many bullets the Russians are spending in Ukraine. The taxation was not in reaction to how Hamas is attacking Israel. The taxation was not even in response to reducing borrowing because we are still borrowing at the same rate we were. So let us not lie to Kenyans because economics are the only thing you cannot do propaganda about. When you go to change the dollar, there is no dollar that for an Uhuru supporter, a Raila supporter, and a dollar for Ruto supporter. We are all feeling the same thing. The truth is, instead of explaining Suju Ukraine, Mara Uhuru did this. No, 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 no. Can we discuss bringing the cost of living down? Can we discuss stabilizing the dollar? Can we discuss bringing business back to Kenya? Actually, the argument has been that Kenyans have been cushioned for a long time. And I see Arnold looking up the cost of fuel in Tanzania and Uganda. Even as uh, Yoweri Museveni says, uh, the government to government, is it? Okay, although that was the business deal, so, we say the government to government deal is what has cost us uh, the imports from what who Museveni calls middlemen in Kenya uh, to Uganda. But, sorry? So Kenyans were cushioned. For a long time. That's the argument. Yeah. Actually, do you remember the media interview? I can't remember whether it's the last one the president did and he said, actually, we are undertaxed mm -hmm. as a people and that this is about bringing us at par that, uh, with our fine. neighbors. That's fine. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's, let's take that argument. Okay, uh, but and Shikili follow... happened to Wakili. Wakili, na, wakidogu wako neglected. Apa. <laughs> Wakili, I, I've protected you. Thank you, Ellie, for protection. I think mm -hmm. I wanted to be the decent person because uh, <laughs> the, the conversation was almost degenerating into an Azimeo Kenya Kwanza conversation. Well, no, 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 really. None of us is in any yeah. of either of those things. But, uh -huh. but I think the issue, the issues here really are that um, it is very easy to agree with the title of the newspaper, and mm -hmm. I think. Uh, and, and actually, if if Arnold didn't like, if should I say, you know, this Maliba Arnold is really confusing me. Okay, if Arnold didn't like that other the headline, he wouldn't like this one. Why Ruto's tax? Everything that moves approach is bound to fail. Yes. Yes, I think uh, the the truth of the matter, and, mm -hmm. and I think it is high time we face the truth as a country. It's time we face the reality as a government. We will not continue to blame. Uh, the, the former president, the first president of the Republic of Kenya, Jomo Kenyatta, President Moi, President Kibaki, or Uru Kenyatta as a government of the day. We cannot also continue to heap blame on the newspapers because of the economic wars that we face as a country. As a responsible country, we need to tell ourselves the truth that uh, things are not good, things are not working. And, and I would give you these reasons, uh, Olive, and the viewers today. The reason why uh, the newspapers are carrying the right headlines. The reason why the economy is not functioning is not because of somebody else to blame. It is because the government in place is unable to deliver on the promises. The government that, are, that is in place has been around for more than one year. It has its budget now, which was passed, and uh, which is a good budget. And these are the reasons why I think our economy is not functioning. Number one is that the economy is not efficient. The economy is not effective. I do not want to give so many examples. I would give you two examples. The first example is that if you file a case today in court, and you can look at the case of, uh, you can look at the NHIF case, you've been in court for 10 years, being tried for, mat for issues of misappropriation, being tried for a number of criminal offenses. A decade later, you've lost your job, you, you've spent quite some fortunes, you're acquitted. It tells you that our justice system is not functioning. And I would want to take this into the economic perspective. If you have a matter involving money in the Court of Appeal, um, you've filed it somewhere in Nairobi or in Akuru. In uh, 20, 
2016, 2015, around that time, it would take you about 10 years for that appeal to be had. So that if there is money that is locked up, it would take 10 years for the economy to realize this money. If you have a justice system like the one that we have today, that um, is very slow, not necessarily, not necessarily because uh, we can't do better, but, but because we are not used to, as a country, to systems that are efficient, to systems that, that are effective, it means the economy is going to slow down. And uh, we've been seeing analysts in the last uh, couple of weeks telling us that uh, several billions have been withdrawn from the economy this year in 2023 compared to the previous year. About 400 billion has been withdrawn from the economy. I don't know what uh, Mr. Maliba uh, would be saying about this. That is to say that for that, uh, the cash flows that we have, the circulation of cash that we, as a, that we got as a country are going down. And one of the reasons I would give is because we have an economy that is not efficient, an economy that is not effective. And I do not think, in all fairness, we can blame uh, Uhuru Kenyatta because of this. I do not think we can blame Moi or uh, Mwai Kibaki or the founding president of this country. The other issue that I would want to point out, because I do not want to give many examples, it is not the time for us to blame anybody. As a government that is in place, that has the machinery, that has the cash, we must make the system in the economy to be efficient and effective. If you have a complaint and, uh, and you went to the police, for example, and reported that you've stolen, I mean, you've lost an item, um, it would never be investigated. You have to go twice, you have to be there thrice, and it has to be a very serious issue, and you have to facilitate. As if that was not enough, as if that was not uh, good enough, if you are running a matatu in this country and uh, you have a few issues, you have a few misdemeanors, um, the best thing to do is to give the police 5,000 shillings on the road. And the police today are collecting uh, presently. They do not fear. Uh, they now have a cut planche. They have an open check to collect. So what I'm saying is that we have an economy that is completely inefficient, an economy that is completely ineffective. And over and above that, corruption continues to thrive. So we are collecting so much money from people who are tired, people who are overtaxed, and we also have an economic system that is almost grinding to a halt. When you have a situation where, therefore, you are taxing people who are not making any more money, you have an economy that is not generating money as would be expected. Um, the consequences would be as sure as the sun rises from the east you are going to continue to have an economic slump. It's not just erosion of the shilling. Even the circulation of cash would go down. And uh, I do not want to predict that in a short while we are going to have economic doldrums as a nation. I, I, could, I can see Arnold, Maliba Arnold from my, the side of my eye when the bit you talked about economic grinding to a halt and I'm sure he's just about to ask you to give him data to no, mark no, that statement. I, I, but I, she, I, I, wait, wait, I, I cut short Mark first yes. and then we'll come to you Arnold. Let, let, let. Meanwhile, Mabel, I don't know whether I... I Switched our cups. Please come and switch and change up uh, Maliba's it, uh, cup. It has some lipstick on it. And I suspect I may be the offending party. <laughs> this is the Lord's work. Oh, it, 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 we were wondering what was <laughs> happening to <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm so sorry. Mummy Water was visiting. Uh -huh. <laughs> the point is this that subsidies are not a bad thing. The French, for example, uh, subsidize their dairy farmers and have done so for decades. Okay? There is nothing wrong at all. With subsidies, there is nothing wrong with cushioning your citizens. It is the role of government to make life as comfortable as possible for its citizens. In fact, there are countries in this world that leverage no tax on their citizens. Why? Because if they're able to get the money from oil, then let their citizens live at peace. They will hire Africans like us to go clean and do everything for them. There is nothing wrong with cushioning people, one. Two, there is everything wrong with making the business environment difficult. Let me be very clear. The balance of taxation must always be that you tax as low as possible to spur business as much as possible because you will collect more taxes. The reason why California pay pays more taxes than a place like Vermont is because California has more money. 
So they can charge you more tax because you may, can make more money in California. So you cannot just uh, tax arbitrarily. Number three, it is not true to say that the issue of cost of living has not been addressed and the science is there to prove that it has not been addressed. For example, you do not need anyone to give you a report to tell you that the day the tax on fuel was put, fuel prices went up. So the media is not making that up. You don't need proof to be shown that the last time you got your pay slip in January 2023 versus your pay slip today, what your employer has been paying you is the same, but the taxation has reduced what you take home. What science do you need to show what is obvious to Kenyans? It is time for us to stop having these sideshow conversations about Uhuru did this, we borrowed this, we borrowed that. At the end of the day, guess what? This country is like a divorced wife. And you would us from our ex-husband. Would us promised us a better marriage, a better life. Please don't make us suffer in your house. Then tell us, you know, if you are with your other husband, it will be us. Mm -hmm. Guess what? We are not with them. We are with you. And we are suffering in your house. No one is looking to Raila Odinga asking him, how would your government have been? We don't know and we don't care. We are in your house, in your home. You promised us nyama, nyama choma, skumawiki and ugali. We are eating uskumawiki and we cannot afford ugali. My friend, stop the excuses. You married us, deal with us according to our prenuptial agreement. All right. We were told there was a plan. <laughs> then we were told the coffers were empty. But, um, Arnold, my, the question I, I had asked you, uh, the control of budget talked about budgeted corruption. Um, ju just reading from this, uh, the, the excesses of government, and David D himself has acknowledge this, the excess of, of government have not been tempered. Uh, in fact, if anything, if you look at the foreign trips, there are those who argue they have been uh, inflated. And then, um, what am I forgetting? Uh, I'm forgetting something. One second. I can respond to that. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Plus the previous Before I forget, raised, because I'm also looking at uh, also the that. time. And then we have an administration that has had to walk back several statements with, to do with, with foreign policy. We, we had a, a meeting. CS, who the U.S. refused to do business with. We, uh, what, what is this? The president himself has made statements such as Kunamambo Matatu with regard to the Nation Media Group when he was critiquing or criticizing uh, our, our report, uh, reportage of um, um, the petroleum development levy being used to cushion Kenyans as a subsidy. He told us it is because we are not owned by, we are not Kenyan owned. So statements like that, how do they engender? Uh, uh, um, a business environment that fosters growth? I'll respond to that. I've written it down, but then I'll start with uh, quick responses to mm -hmm. Mark's submission and partly Wakili. First of all, uh, the analogy about uh, the night watchman telling you that the day watchman didn't mm -hmm. do his good work, those are, it's a false equivalent. It's not the same with this. The real situation is that the day hey, watchman... Yeah, yeah, Bibi. I'll actually come to okay. that. Uh -huh. that uh, the day watchman actually set traps to ensure that uh, security wouldn't be effective. There is no nothing wrong when you are doing your uh, morning report to actually tell uh, the boss or whoever you report to that when I came in, I found the fence broken down, but it had not been properly documented in the occurrence book. So that is a false analogy too. Uh, when he actually brings in the issue of uh, you orders from a former husband and you promised us heaven. It's also possible you came with the trauma from your previous relationship. And you want to bring that down on this particular relationship. And then we are forced to bear with it. So when we point out that trauma that you probably have brought from the previous relationship, the bad manners you brought from the other side, the baggage you carried from the other side, we, it's not wrong. It's actually just important. When you point it out, that is how you heal it. Now, let's just move very fast. And then on the issues of me asking for data, it's important that we underscore that once we meet in the morning, on evidence-based platforms like this. There's only one person we, we believe in. In God we trust. Everybody else who comes to this show must provide data. Only God is the person we're going to trust with whatever they say. Any other person who comes in here must bring data. So when, for example, you bring in the issue of Ethiopia, have you read what is actually working in Ethiopia, for example? They also have got their own challenges. So even as we compare, let us have a bigger canvas a bigger background 
where you can actually pinpoint how is it working, for example. When you compare us to Tanzania, how does Kenya, for example, compare to Tanzania? How is their food security, for example? Today, we're no longer talking about the unga price because unga is now at about between 150 and 158, the packet ones. In the villages, it's 90, it's 80, it's 100, it's much lower than that. Now, we've moved on, we've brought up newer issues. So, when we do these comparisons, let us speak like for like. It's very, very important. Now, on taxation, can we just be fair, at least when we talk about these issues? The, the, the tax regime has not been fair. It's been unfair to about 3 million people, 3.5 million people who are in official employment. The other people, including Wakili, somehow they find ways of running away from taxes. It's not I, true. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying. I'm saying the other people. housing levy. I'm coming to that. Ben may increase. NSSF I, I, I'll, I'll be coming to that. Uh -huh. Since 1992, the informal sector overtook the formal sector as the biggest job creator. Somehow we have remained with this grey economy, and it's, as it suggests, the informal sector is that even the data is not so clear. But somehow we can get figures around that. That's what we are trying to actually work around and ensure that taxation is equitable. Because people like you, Olive, uh, people who have got uh, eight, no, unfortunately for you, you have got a five, I don't know to what time, a five a.m. to what time job, people who have got a pay slip have been the people who've been bearing the biggest brand. A number of these taxes that are being introduced is actually to balance out. Because there are people who are in some sectors making a lot of money, but that money doesn't reflect on this other uh, end. So as we work around, a lot of these things can actually feel like they're not proper. Wakili spoke about an economy that is not effective. Is it new and only different, or rather, uh, does it look like this particular regime? No. That has been a problem that is being we are trying to actually address. By the way, we are in the process of a radical restructuring of the economy. We are redesigning the economy from the bottom up to what we actually have been used to. So automatically, we are going to expect a few things not working the way we are used to. So a lot of these noises you hear, is the way people are used to doing business and going about. So when the new way of doing things comes into town, there's going to be noises, but eventually we will actually get going about it. I so, think, Arnold, part of the problem then, is part of the problem is there has been a business as usual approach. Because if you tell us we are in dire economic straits and all of us need to quasi mshipi, and you're still seeing, um, the other day I was joking, I saw a helicopter land in Elementaita when uh, the NATO AJO committee, uh, NADCO, were meeting in Elementaita, and I said, you know, they needed to have parked their vehicles, picked a van from outside Nation Center, and be driven to Elementaita. Then somebody told me, actually, these choppers were landing at Bombas of Kenya uh, when they so, held their talks there. So why are we all not kaza I, I, I'll come to that kindly. Let me just allow to deal with this. Then there's the place of history. Uh, Mark, incidentally, at some point, he now actually is an independent man, worked for the Jubilee administration, uh, was on that particular end. Uh, on that particular end, we were reminded that uh, history is important. We can't run away from the place of history. A person who doesn't know where he's come from, he most likely doesn't know where he is now and cannot lie to you about where he's going. So you cannot keep on telling us, tell us where we are going, and you don't want us to lay a foundation of where we've come from, where we are, and where we are going. So when you talk about the plan by this particular administration, it's about where we have come from, the place we are, Okay. and where we want to go. Right. So I'm, it's important. I'm looking at the clock. We so, need to start making our concluding so, remarks. So uh, on, uh, on the issues of what have we done, like for example, I know uh, you might not know that government officers have actually been deboarded. I don't know whether that is the word in English. As they try to go to trips out of this country, I know I will not actually name counties and even national government officials that have actually been deboarded. Government is actually working so hard to ensure that the uh, circular that is actually out there on people actually living on the tight that the government actually wants us, is actually being worked on. If you found out on your own, and I can actually give you free of charge, just ask the people at the airport how many times people are being, sometimes after they've gone through shortcut, the Kenyan way, to ensure that they are going out for trips, people are being made to actually come off planes at the airport. We're talking about government officers. That is how far the government has gone to actually work around this. We are reporting the few exceptions that we see. As of NADCO, I cannot actually speak for them because I am a firm believer no, that we, just don't an example. Need, I didn't, uh -huh. we don't need those, uh, th that particular dialogue. But there's a section of Kenyans who believe it's important. 
the other bit of it no, is no okay i'll, I'll have to stop it there controller. because kidogo tutanyolewa hewani in <laughs> in uh, 30 seconds 30 seconds 30 seconds just your concluding remarks on this Thank you very much, Oliver and viewers. I must say that uh, we are a country of hard workers. We have a president also who is fairly hard working. We collect a lot of money in terms of taxation. Several Kenyans now are at the brink of gasping for their breath because of this taxation. What I think we need to do as a country is that I would expect the president and this government to talk less, come down, ensure that the business environment is efficient, is effective. I would also request the president and uh, each people, the, the people in government, to also speak in a manner that is friendly. Unlock the judiciary, unlock the land offices, unlock the police, ensure that we have a different country, we give it a new face, and we have a paradigm shift and culture of working so that we are able to make more money, more money in circulation, and uh, we prosper as a country. Thank you. All right, Mark? I think it's time that we stopped the politics of economics. Mm -hmm. One of the things that needs to be sacrosanct is that we need to be able to have an apolitical conversation about economics because at the end of the day, there is no unga or fuel for whichever political divide you're on. When our politics, when our economics is apolitical, then we can have a realistic conversation and solve problems real time. Mistakes have been made. And I must congratulate the president, for example, in changing his mind about Kenya Meat Commission and putting it back. It is only, it's only a fool who never changes his mind. And it is even more foolish to defend a foolish mistake. The same way the president has been able to see the places he needed to change tack and has done so, let him continue to do so in as far as this economy is concerned. The politics of explaining and blaming Uhuru Kenyatta and the rest is not helping anyone. All right. Uh, your last no, 30 seconds, Arnold. Okay. Mm. Uh, the process of coming to Bath is quite uh, an interesting one because at conception, uh, there are few traits that make people come together to copulate and that particular process is normally very exciting. It's like uh, the campaigns. But the gestation process and coming to birth is quite a painful process. We had a simulating situation in the campaigns. Uh, one of the suitors won. We are in the gestation period, and the Fifth Republic is coming to birth. As we bring the Fifth Republic to birth, a few things are going to be a little bit difficult. Just the same way we had the Third Republic a little bit being so difficult in 205, 204, 205. But eventually, the plan is going to work. It's actually uh, made up of a people who have got foresight, who understand where we've come from, and they know where we are. There has never been a mix-up of saying that there is no denialism, that we've probably come from a bad place in the last 10 years. We are not at a good place, but we need to go to a better place, and we are working towards a better place. So the coming to birth of the Fifth Republic is slightly painful, those are labor pains. There's going to be joy immediately a child is born. And in 2024, 2025, we will actually have a better republic than has been. So don't worry about the dooms, uh, the preachers okay. of doom, and everybody All else right. actually preaching these hard things on Mondays that we discuss here. A better day is coming. A better day is coming. All right, so we will leave it there. Uh, we've had in studio Kip Koech, and teach and advocate. We've had Mark Vichachi, communication strategist, and Maliba Arnold, public policy analyst. Uh, my name is Olive Burrs. That's it for AM Live, but I'm coming back with your world. This morning, we're looking at the human resource capital and UHC, universal health coverage. Stay tuned.